What if I told you that this scene was created without any simulations? Whoa. In fact, a quick orientation of the camera will reveal that the fire here is actually just a 2D plane with the footage cray asset being played on it. Basically, what we have here then is some good old fashioned smoke and mirrors, which give the illusion of complex simulated effects without actually having to suffer through the egregious render times and buggy simulations. All you need to do then is figure out how to get stock footage assets from footagecrate.com into Blender. Now, the old way we recommended doing this involved downloading the asset, importing it as a plane, and then setting up the materials yourself. However, Production Crate has just made this process possible with the click of a meager button via the use of a new Blender add-on. The installation process is pretty simple. First, you're going to want to download and install the Production Crate portal, which will give you convenient access to various different Production Crate add-ons and plugins. A full tutorial on how to install the portal can be seen right here. Once installed, you can log into your account and you should be able to find the Footage Crate Blender add-on, which you can simply click to download. Next, click Open and note the file location of the downloaded add-on. Finally, open up Blender, go to Preferences, then Add-ons, then click Install. Then find your way back to the aforementioned file location, double-click on the zip file, and then enable the add-on. Now, to allow Blender and FootageCrate.com to communicate, you can go to the FootageCrate Import Side panel, and click Enable Web Link. You can then pop over to ProductionCrate.com, and when you click on an asset, you should see this little thingy, which you could then click on and... Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! You now Woo! have the asset in your Blender scene. Furthermore, in the shader editor, you can see that the asset already has a material set up and ready to go. Nevertheless, you still may want to make some changes to it in your scene. For example, let's say you've imported a magic asset, but would prefer it to be a different color. Well, by using the built-in setup and using a hue saturation node in between the texture and emission color channel, and then adjusting the hue, you can easily change the color of any of your footage crate assets. Additionally, brightening or darkening your asset is as simple as using the brightness node already included in the material setup. However, in the case of fire and magic effects, sometimes the emission from your asset alone isn't sufficient to illuminate your model. In that case, you can use a point lamp, change it to the color of your asset, and place it next to your model. Wow! If you have an asset that oscillates in brightness, you can make your lamp do the same by adding a power keyframe, going to the graph editor, selecting the power channel, and then going to the modifier panel, and adding a noise modifier. After adjusting the scale and amplitude of the noise, you should be able to fine tune your lamp to flicker at the right frequency such that it fits well with your asset. Finally, to preserve the illusion of simulation, even after your camera orbits the scene, you can simply use a combination of assets placed at strategic points, or you can even subdivide and alter the shape of the asset so that it's usable from different angles. But perhaps the most effective method is to simply add a lock track constraint to your asset. Then, after selecting your camera in the drop-down, select Z as the rotation axis and Y as the lock axis. Doing this will allow your 2D asset to rotate with the camera, meaning that the viewer will never be able to see that the effect is just a plane. With those tips and tricks, you should be able to realistically integrate effects into your scene without actually having to simulate anything saving both you and your graphics card unnecessary stress. 